the overpopulation time bomb. The United Nations sees rise for the world to 10.1 billion people. The population of the world long expected to stabilize just above 9 billion in the middle of the century, if not before, will instead keep growing and may hit 10.1 billion people by the year 2100, which may be a conservative estimate the United Nations projected in a report released on Tuesday. Growth in Africa remains so high that the population there could more than triple in this century, rising from today's 1 billion to 3.6 billion, the report said. A sobering forecast for a continent already struggling to provide food and water for its people. The new report comes just ahead of a demographic milestone, with the world population expected to pass 7 billion in late October, only a dozen years after it surpassed 6 billion. Demographers call the new projections a reminder that a problem that helped define global politics in the 20th century, the population explosion, is far from solved in the 21st. Every billion more people makes life more difficult for everybody. It's as simple as that, said a demographer at the Population Council, a research group in New York. Is it the end of the world? No. Can we feed 10 billion people? Possibly. Probably. But we obviously would be better off with a much smaller population. In other words, what are the limits of overpopulation? How many people can the world sustain? And in what manner or quality of life? This should be a very important question. The projections were made by the United Nations Population Division, which has a track record of fairly accurate forecasts. In the new report, the division raised its forecast for the year 2050, estimating that the world would most likely have some 9.3 billion people then, an increase of 156 million over the previous estimate for that year, published in 2008. Some of the factors behind the upward revisions is that fertility is not declining as rapidly as expected in some poor countries, and has shown a slight increase in many wealthier countries, including the United States, Britain, and Denmark. The director of the United Nations Population Division said the world's fastest growing countries and the wealthy Western nations that help finance their development face a choice about whether to renew their emphasis on programs that encourage family planning. Although they were a major focus of development policy in the 1970s and 1980s, such programs have stagnated in many countries, caught up in ideological battles over abortion, sex education, and the role of women in society. Conservatives have attacked such programs as government meddling in private decisions and, in some countries, Catholic groups fought widespread availability of birth control, and some feminists called for less focus on population control and more on empowering women. Over the past decade, foreign aid to pay for contraceptives, $238 million in 2009, has barely budged. According to United Nations estimates, the United States has long been the biggest donor, but the budget compromise in Congress last month cut international family planning programs by 5%. The need has grown, but the availability of family planning services has not, said an economist at the Center for Global Development in Washington, a research group. The revised numbers are based on new forecasting methods and the latest demographic trends, but any forecast looking 90 years into the future comes with a whole bunch of caveats, and that is particularly so for some fast-growing countries whose populations are projected to skyrocket over the next century. For instance, Yemen, a country whose population has quintupled since 1950 to 25 million, would see its numbers quadruple again to some 100 million by century's end. If the projections prove accurate, Yemen already depends on food imports and faces critical water shortages. In Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa, the report projects the population will rise from today's 162 million to 730 million by 2100. The implicit and possibly questionable 
assumption behind these numbers is that food and water will be available for the billions yet unborn and that potential catastrophes ranging from climate change to wars to epidemics will not serve as a break on population growth, at least not enough. So, it is quite possible for a number of these countries that are smallish and have fewer resources. These numbers are just not sustainable. Well-designed programs can bring down growth rates even in the poorest countries, provided with information and voluntary access to birth control methods. Women have chosen to have fewer children in societies as diverse as Bangladesh, Iran, Mexico, Sri Lanka, and Thailand. One message from the new report is that the AIDS epidemic, devastating as it has been, has not been the demographic disaster that was once predicted. Prevalence estimates and projections for the human immunodeficiency virus made for Africa in the 1990s turned out to be too high, and in many populations, treatment with new drug regimens has cut the death rate from the disease. But the survival of millions of people with AIDS who would have died without treatment and falling rates of infant and child mortality, both heartening trends, also mean that fertility rates for women need to fall faster to curb population growth, demographers said. Other factors have slowed change in Africa, experts said, including women's lack of power in their relationships with men, traditions like early marriage and polygamy, and a dearth of political leadership. While approximately three-quarters of married American women use a modern contraceptive, the comparable proportions are a quarter of women in East Africa, one in ten in West Africa, and a mere seven percent in Central Africa, according to United Nations statistics. West and Central Africa are the two big regions of the world where the fertility transition is happening, but at a snail's pace, said John F. May, a World Bank demographer. Some studies suggest that providing easy, affordable access to contraceptives is not always sufficient. Some studies have found that general education in girls plays a critical role and that literate young women are more likely to understand that family size is a choice. The new report suggests that China, which has for decades enforced restrictive population policies, could soon enter the ranks of countries with declining populations peaking at 1.4 billion in the next couple of decades, then falling approximately to 941 million by 2100. The United States is growing faster than many rich countries, largely because of high immigration and higher fertility among Hispanic immigrants. The new report projects that the United States population will rise from today's 311 million to some 478 million by 2100. Of course, these are only estimates and the true numbers could be lower or higher depending on many different circumstances. In conclusion, the nations of this world must get together or come together and at some point decide how many people the world can really sustain and in what manner our quality of life. Because ultimately, it's about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations. This too is another sign of the times, then times, transition days, which is a continuing process of extraordinary changes, happenings, and events. Everything that must change, must change quickly or rapidly, and for the better. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 Bring ye all the types into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, but there shall not be room enough to receive it. 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. 12. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome world, saith the Lord of hosts. 13. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against thee? 14. Ye have said, It is vain to serve God, and what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? 15. 
and now we call the proud happy. Yes, they that work wickedness are set up. Yes, they that tempt God are even delivered. 16. Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name. 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spares his own son that serves him. 18. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. Luke chapter 21 verse 34 And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with partying and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. 35 For as a snare shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. 36 Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are coming to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Yes, the time has come for all these things to be fulfilled. Everything is connected, and everything is numbered.